One of the most useful forms of energy is electric energy and that's because electric energy can be readily and easily transformed into other forms of energy. For example, electric energy is commonly transformed into mechanical energy. For example, in a car, it's transformed into thermal energy as well as radiation. So let's examine one very common example in which electric energy is, is transformed into thermal thermal energy as well as radiation. And let's examine what takes place inside a light bulb. So let's suppose we take a light bulb and we plug it into some source of electricity. So once we plug it in, electrons will begin to flow through the filament inside our light bulb. So the light bulb has a small wire filament and electrons flow through that filament. Now when electrons flow through that filament, those electrons will collide with the atoms and molecules found inside our wire filament. Now when those collisions take place, energy is transferred. So the kinetic energy of our electrons is transferred into the kinetic energy of the atoms and molecules. So the atoms and molecules collectively gain more kinetic energy, so they gain thermal energy. And because kinetic energy and temperature are related, as the kinetic energy of the molecules and atoms within our wire filament inside our light bulb increases, the temperature will also increase. And so that means, because there is an increase in temperature, radiation in the form of visible light will take place. So we're going to produce light as a result of the transfer of electrons. So inside a light bulb, electron or electric energy is transformed into thermal energy as well as radiation. Now, let's discuss electrical power. So what exactly is electrical power? Well, generally speaking, power is essentially the rate of change of energy. And electrical power is the rate of change of electric energy. So what exactly is electric energy? How do we define electric energy using an equation? So recall that if we move a quantity of charge given by Q over a voltage difference given by V, the change in energy is given by taking the product of the charge Q and the voltage difference V. Now, when an infinitely small quantity of charge dQ is moved over a potential difference of V, the quantity of energy used or produced is given by the following equation. So our infinitely small quantity of energy dU is equal to dQ multiplied by the voltage difference. Now, let's suppose that it takes an infinitely small time given by dt to move a charge dq across a potential difference of v. Then in that case, we can find the power by dividing both sides of these equations by dt. Remember, our power is the rate of change of energy. So the power is equal to du divided by dt, which is equal to dq divided by dt multiplied by our voltage difference. Now let's examine this ratio. So this ratio is by definition the instantaneous electric current. So we can replace this with I. So we see that the power output given by uppercase P is equal to the product of the electric current I and the voltage difference given by V. So P is equal to IV. So this is essentially the general equation that gives us the power delivered or used up as a result of any electric device. Now let's specifically discuss resistors. Let's determine the power that resistors use up. So the rate of change of energy or the rate of energy transformed in resistors is given by the following two equations. And we get these two equations by using this general equation for power and Ohm's law. So Ohm's law tells us that voltage is equal to I multiplied by R. So if we take this equation and replace our voltage with I times R, we get this result. So power is 
is equal to the product of the square of our current and our resistance. Now, if we take this equation, Ohm's law, and rearrange and solve for I, we see that our I is equal to voltage divided by resistance. So if we replace I with voltage divided by resistance, we get the second equation. The power output is equal to V squared divided by R. So these two equations only apply for resistors. While this is the more general equation, it applies to other forms, to other devices, such as, for example, batteries. So let's look at the following example. We'd like to determine the resistance of a device that uses 100 watts of power over a voltage difference of 12 volts. So we want to calculate what the resistance is so we can use one of these equations. So we know the power and we know the voltage, so that means we can use this equation. So we take this equation and solve for our R. The resistance is equal to V squared divided by the power. So our V squared is 12 squared, so that gives us 144 volts squared, divided by a power of 100 watts, and that gives us a resistance of 1.44 ohms.